how do we curate this incredible connection that we have to bring the very best out of both of us? Yes. That's a great question. You know, if we just started from that standpoint and then use that as a barometer, which is exactly what we've done for now coming up on a decade, but wow, does that change the dynamic completely. So anytime there is something of feedback or there is conversation around how we can get better, it's, although we, we make sure we share it with each other that it's not coming from a negative place, but it's also just baked in that we know like from our hearts when we share something that it is not to tear you down, but it's actually to lift you up. And, and, and so that, that in and of itself is just an incredible foundation to just say, okay, hey, from here, you know, as you said, I'm not, I'm not going to go out and just uh, start watering all the grass in different areas. I'm going to, like, the grass is greener where I water it. So it's important to have these foundations to, to put the right flowers that you want to see and then take the time to actually water it so you can start to say, yeah, this is, this is what I'm looking for. And by that, you mean nurture the relationship yes. you're in, yes. right? Thank you. Because everyone's... Yeah. I got a little lost in that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you desire to feel connected in your relationship, then you need to utilize the tools and plant the discussion points with the partner you're with yes. in order to get that. Because if you just shift to a new relationship... Along with that comes all the same things that you're navigating in your current relationship. Now, we're not saying every relationship is going to be great, right? Maybe there is a need to shift. But over and over, what we've seen are these relationships, these individuals move relationship to relationship to relationship and ask the question, why do I keep attracting the same type of relationship? That's one. And then also there's also these this these individuals who have been together for 30, 40 plus years. And there's, and now it's at a standpoint of like, oh, my partner is different than where we started, uh -huh. which isn't necessarily logical because, you know, after 30 or 40 years, if we're exactly the same, you know, that, how are we growing? Uh, right. Of course, we're of course, gonna we're going to be different. I mean, we're different in the span of a year uh, oftentimes. Right? right. And so if, if you compound that over 30 or 40 years, yeah, there's a big. There, there's probably going to be a massive difference. We shift. I mean, our whole lives change during that time. So, being willing to view this, these adjustments, first and foremost, from the space of growth and expansion, saying, okay, well, maybe this is an opportunity to get to know my partner at a whole other level. Why is that a bad thing? Why does that immediately have to be a negative? Why can't that be a great thing? Why can't that spice up the relationship or create some new opportunity or pull the best out of you? You know, if your partner is, 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 is expanding or, or, or moving in a different way than you imagined, you know, maybe that's an opportunity to grow as well. It doesn't have to be exactly the same either. It can be, you can run expansion in parallel, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So just because I really like pickleball now and we didn't, I didn't 10 years ago, doesn't mean that, you know, you have to be there, you know, doing pickleball every single week with me, you know, that's, but you give me the space to do it. And then when we talk about it, you're engaged in it. And, and so that's exciting for me that we get to share in that, even though you're not participating at the same capacity that I am. Right. So, but we had to talk about that right. though, right? That's true. That's true. And this is where, this is a tip for anyone who's looking for tips on how to get to this stage. And that's, you were very excited about pickleball and you really wanted to share pickleball with me. You really desired me to enjoy pickleball the same way that you enjoy pickleball. And I really wish I did, yeah. <laughs> I do, because it looks so fun, but it's just not my thing. And not that I desired to suppress it in you, but when we would get together with friends, you would say, you know, oh, they want to do a couple pickleball event and she doesn't know that she's good, but she's really good. And without meaning to, you were putting me on the spot to participate in something that I didn't really enjoy. And you'd say, oh, well, their partner is just starting out too. 
And so it's okay. You don't have to worry. But for me, I felt like I was consistently being put on the spot to engage in something that I had communicated wasn't really my primary interest. You didn't mean to be doing it. You sincerely thought I was really good at it in the times that I did play. So for me, I had to express to you, I know it isn't your intention, but your action is making me feel this way. Is there a possibility that we can change the action, not your excitement, not your love and adoration for me, but just the action so that I don't feel put on the spot? And what that did was open up this bridge between us where you understood, I really appreciate the excitement. I really appreciate your desire to include me. All of that was incredibly meaningful for me. But the action of being put on the spot made me feel uncomfortable. And so I wasn't condemning you for that. I was simply bringing it to your awareness. 